What's up guys and welcome to Wall Street Millennial. Over the past couple days, GameStop has squeezed again, almost tripling to reach $138 per share at the time of recording this video. Before we get into the video, keep in mind that we are not financial advisors and this video is for educational purposes only. Make sure to do your own research before investing in GameStop or any other stock. The catalyst behind this latest short squeeze appears to be the resignation of the CFO, which indicates that Ryan Cohen is serious about making real changes at GameStop's leadership to turn the business around. Also, with the elevated share price, the company now has a market cap of almost $10 billion. This is potentially enough to make a significant acquisition in the gaming space, either by selling equity to raise cash or doing an all-stock merger. If they can successfully capitalize on their high share price and make a game-changing acquisition, the rise in stock price could become a self-fulfilling prophecy as a new acquisition could allow the company to meaningfully enhance its future prospects and even justify an even higher stock price in the future. And with the recent rise in GameStop, famous short seller Andrew Leff from Citron Research is weighing in again, but this time not with a short report. He is instead saying that GameStop should capitalize on their current stock price and acquire esports gambling company Esports Entertainment, ticker symbol GMBL. You might remember Andrew Left as a short seller who shorted GameStop with a $20 price target. At the time, GameStop was trading around $40 a share, so he saw 50% downside. Obviously, this trade turned out to be dead wrong, and he claims to have covered the short in the 90s for a 100% loss. At the time, he released a video on YouTube explaining his short thesis for the retailer, and he actually made one very interesting point that is relevant today. Let's have a listen. And last thing is the company can become your biggest enemy. We're looking at a company with a billion dollars in debt. If the stock goes any higher, they should just sell stock right into you and raise money and pay off some debt. More importantly, if they want to make an acquisition in the gaming space, acquisitions start in the billions in this place. And they're going to have to sell a lot of stock to do that. Me personally, I think you can have a pickup. This is either going to be JCPenney. That Bright was in when Bill Ackman brought in Ron Johnson, people got excited he was going to turn it, but you just can't change a bad retailer. Or it could be blockbuster video that never adapted to technology. You know, I look at Ryan Cohen's letter, which was well written two months ago to GameStop management, how they completely dropped the ball with what they were doing. It's the same management right now. The stock was $20 before we saw any holiday data. There's no reason it doesn't go right back to $20. There's nothing in place there. You can get mad, you can hack my account, you can go to Twitter, you can sign on, you can call me every name. If you wanna save the company, take your energy, go out there and actually buy something from GameStop because that's the only thing that saves this. Other than that, the more you buy, I'm sure there'll be supply on the other side. He makes two interesting points. The first is that as the stock price is elevated, GameStop can issue new shares to either pay down debt or make an acquisition in the gaming space. He used this as a bear point in the past because this would cause dilution for existing shareholders. But this same point could now actually be a bull point. If they can make a transformative acquisition, it could be well worth the dilution it causes. He also makes the point that GameStop's management has historically been incompetent and dropped the ball as far as modernizing their business strategy and shifting to e-commerce. But Ryan Cohen is making significant changes to management as he recently forced out their CFO so he can replace him with someone more in line with plans to reshape the company. So it looks like both of these bear points that Andrew Left talked about in the past have actually turned into bull points and this could explain why the stock is surging higher. So what is Esports Entertainment Group and why does Citron think GameStop should buy it? The ticker symbol is GMBL and it's a microcap stock with a market cap currently sitting at $366 million. It's almost tripled since the beginning of January on speculation that it could be acquired by GameStop. Before this move higher, its market cap was around $100 million. So it's much smaller than GameStop, and with GameStop's current market cap, it seems that they could easily have the financial wherewithal to acquire it. GMBL is a B2C wagering platform that enables sports betting in the esports industry. They operate the Vi Bet gambling platform that lets consumers bet on esports matches in popular games such as League of Legends, Counter-Strike, Dota 2, and more. It is currently available in the EU, Canada, Japan, and Russia. While it is currently not operating in the US, Recent changes in gambling laws have given them an opening and they plan to release a US version in the platform open to residents of New Jersey in the near future. With esports growing in popularity every year and more and more states in the US legalizing sports betting, there is a huge opportunity for esports betting in the US and GMBL may be able to capitalize on this. In Sichuan's report, they say that seeing from the recent price action of GameStop, as well as the original short squeeze in January, it is clear that people love gambling. Because of this, GameStop should take advantage of their loyal customer base and transition to esports and online gambling. 
They say that they should move away from the low margin business of selling hardware and video games and instead build up a betting platform for their customers to bet on esports. GMBL is the first esports betting company listed on the NASDAQ, although there are several other established online traditional sports betting companies such as DraftKings. Esports betting is on the cusp of exponential growth that GameStop could take advantage of. GameStop has a unique synergistic potential with GMBL because of LandDuel, which is a player versus player betting platform that lets people bet on your skills in third party video games. It lets you bet on your own abilities in esports and has a sophisticated authentication system. We already know that GameStop is interested in esports and has made significant sponsorship deals in established esports centers. This, combined with GMBL's esports betting infrastructure, presents clear synergies. It is clear that esports in general, and especially gambling, is the next leg higher for the industry. Paul Dawalibi, a career venture capitalist in Silicon Valley who specializes in esports, told Andrew why he thinks now is the time to jump into esports betting. To who have either esports experience or finance experience, all very, very serious guys. So team to me was the big check mark. Second one was what space are they playing in, in the esports universe? And, and to me, esports betting has always been, in my mind, one of the most lucrative areas of the entire industry with like the most upside potential really. And why so are we talking people betting on specific teams or people betting against people, a skill-based game? I'll, I'll add one more thing to that. It's actually three things. It's people betting on games that they're watching. It's people, it's players betting against players on games that they're playing. And then there's fantasy betting, which also exists in the esports world, uh, where you're not necessarily, where you're not using real money, but you are still betting. So um, GMBL, the beauty of their business is they have capabilities in all three of those. Um, and, and, and typically where I've stayed away from the betting space is, you know, there's a lot of, there are a lot of shady players in that space. Uh, GMBL was the first to be NASDAQ listed. In fact, they were NASDAQ listed before DraftKings. Um, and, and they really took a, the, the angle of we're going to be sort of the blue chip esports betting provider, right? They have three tier one licenses. They, right? So from that transparency and credibility standpoint, they checked the box for me in the esports betting space. But, but when I say I'm excited about esports betting, to your question specifically, Andrew, it's all three. It's player versus player. It's betting on the tournaments and the, the events, and mm -hmm. it's the fantasy betting. I think all three are gonna be really, really big businesses on their own. If GameStop does acquire GMBL, it could be massively accretive to the value of the overall business. These are the strategies that GMBL is using now. GameStop could incorporate all of these things into its brick and mortar locations and promote them within GameStop stores and on GameStop.com. And once people get into sports betting and esports with GMBL systems, GameStop can capitalize on the hype by selling more of their own products. So the synergies between these two companies seems like a match made in heaven that could propel the combined entity to a massive valuation. So what do you guys think? Do you think GameStop should try to acquire GMBL? Do you think that esports betting is the future of the industry that GameStop plays in? Let us know in the comments section below. Also, follow us on Instagram and TikTok and subscribe to our second channel, WSM Research. In the meantime, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Wall Street Millennial, signing out.